Well, welcome to Victoria Knits. Janet and I are doing Pegan Pass today. Oh, the last time we did this together, it was our first hike. The first hike we'd ever done. August of last year. <laughs> so we thought we'd come up and do it again. It looks very much like fall. We're about halfway through. Um, the drive to the park was really pretty today. I won't show a lot of it. I'll show a little bit of it. It was lovely. said we're about halfway through the hike. Oh, Pegan Pass is lovely. Let's turn you around so you can see what we're looking at. There's been quite a few people on this hike. I think we've lost count at probably 20, huh? Yep. 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 Quite a few people. Which well, sure I'm surprised at. What is today? September 20th? Something like that. It's the day before fall, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So it's the 20th. Yeah. Okay. It's the 20th and it certainly looks like fall here. The flowers are gone and it's brown, but it's it's still really pretty. I think it's probably about maybe 50 degrees out, maybe with yep. a breeze. kind of a stiff, cool breeze, but it's not, it's good for hiking. Oh, we're on our way up there. Let's get going. It's picking up trash because that's what she likes to do when she sees trash on these trails. She's appalled. It's very nice. And this hike is a 9.2 mile round trip hike. It's marked as uh, strenuous. It's a beautiful blue sky, but as you can hear, it's really windy. The air quality is good today. We have some good air quality. We're happy about that. Thought we'd take advantage of it and get a hike in. I'm having a hard time lifting my arm up enough uh -oh. <laughs> to get myself in the <laughs> I haven't hiked in a couple of weeks and I can certainly tell. I've been time. struggling One on this one. 40 minutes. Distance. 3.2 miles. Feels good to be out again though. I'll tell you that. So at this point, we catch up with some other local hikers, and they are telling us that on a trail that takes off of this one that goes up to Sai Pass, there was a uh, mother grizzly and two cubs sighted. So we decide we're all on the correct path for today. Uh, yeah. Oh, Sai? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is the proper trail oh, to take then. Yeah. Well, there's our destination right in that low spot. We're gonna go over there. And this is Pegan Glacier. It's really beautiful. We have to cross this um, scree rock, but you know, it is what it is. It wasn't too bad, really. It's a little nerve wracking, but the views. <laughs> You can't beat those views, can you? Just beautiful. You can even look down there and pick out our car if you try real hard.
the summit. Time to take all that beauty in. It's just lovely. lunchtime <laughs> and we're hungry <laughs> I know I was Janet takes this beautiful picture above me as I'm looking out at that gorgeous view I to do just a little bit of knitting on my Lola socks for little drops of wonderful strictly sock along. <laughs> On the way down, we get to see a mother bighorn sheep and her baby. If this was a male, the horns would be massive and curled and up to 45 inches long. A pair might weigh up to 30 pounds, and the sheep that carried it could weigh up to 300 pounds. Oh my! Get a move on. That was different. <laughs> now she's saying, damn tourists. Yeah. Mommy's going to get mad. Females also have horns, but they're thinner and more gently curved rather than curled. Females weigh about 150 pounds. Bighorn sheep are not as nimble as mountain goats, but they are well adapted to their habitat. Their wide set eyes are large and positioned forward on the head, which provides a wide arc of good vision. And thanks to their amazing balance, they can stand on ledges that are only two inches wide. Go right ahead. Your picture. Go right ahead. <laughs> are you sure? Time to head back down that trail. That view. But first, Janet needs a good look at some rocks. She loves her rocks.
saw a lot of bear scat along the way. As I said, there were some bears that were reported on a different trail, but obviously there had been some on this one too. So let's talk about bear poop for a minute. Uh, from a website I found, it said the color and composition of their poop will change with the seasons, as does their diet. In the spring, bears eat a lot of grass and insects, so their poop is often green and tubular with grass visible. In the late summer and fall, bear poop will be looser and in large plops with berries and apple pieces visible. So that is why it often looks very different. None of it is dog poop because as I said before, dogs are not allowed in Glacier National Park. Hey, welcome to Victoria Fitz. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed that bear poop discussion. I just want to say hello to everybody. I've had a few new subscribers lately. I really appreciate you subscribing. I really appreciate all my returning viewers too. Today is November 7th. I did not put out a podcast in October and um, we'll talk about that later. I thought I'd change the format just a little bit uh, for you new people. Yeah, I like to hike. So I throw in a lot of hiking on my podcast lately. I used to be really focused on history and, you know, I'll jump around to whatever I, <laughs> I'm interested in at the time and throw in with uh, onto my knitting podcast. Um, so I finished those Lola socks and here they are. Really, really liking these. These will go into my Christmas box of socks uh, because um, the yarn is um, Reindeer Games by, Lo uh, by Hannah Made It. And uh, this pink is I Heart Corals by Hannah Made It also. And this pattern, um, I knit these for the uh, Strictly Sock Along. Uh, on um, that's going on on uh, alleys of Little Drops of Wonderful podcast right now. And look at that pattern. Isn't that pretty? It's really an, a simple pattern too. And buying, purchasing this pattern um, actually helps buy a school bus for some kids that really need it in Great Britain. So don't hesitate to go do that. Isn't that lovely? And you can still get in on, um, on the, uh, the sock along, Allie's sock along, because it goes through January 7th of 2021. And if you're like me and you didn't know what Strictly Come Dancing is, it is a British television dance contest in which celebrities partner with professional dancers to compete in mainly ballroom and Latin dance. Uh, the title of the show is a continuation of the long-running series Come Dancing with an allusion to the film Strictly Ballroom. <laughs> uh, it, the format has been exported to 60 other countries and um, here in America, I think it's called uh, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, I don't watch Dancing with the Stars. Uh, I don't watch much stuff like that on TV, but... I did do a little dance with my socks on a different hike and I will inflict that upon you right now. <laughs> Okay, so that was Pegan Pass. And there's a point on the trail where when you're going up, when you're still going up, the trail splits and the left side goes to Pegan Pass. Pegan Pass, I say that wrong all the time. It's not Pegan, it's Pegan Pass. It goes up to Pegan Pass on the left and it goes up to Sai Pass on the right. Well, when we were coming back down from uh, Pegan Pass, we, uh, we stopped and we stared at that sign for Sai. It was only two in the afternoon. 
We'd been hiking for six miles at this point. We still had three miles to go to get back to the car. But Janet and I thought, well, you know, neither one of us had been up to Sai Pass before. So we thought, well, let's check it out. Uh, we were, we had been told that it was a lot steeper than Pegan Pass, but we thought, we'll just go up a little way, see what happens. <laughs> so yeah, Janet and I make the decision to try out Sai Pass. We talk about it and we say, well, we'll go up there a ways, we'll take a look. Now this is where the, they saw the mother grizzly and the two cubs and people had come down from here because of that. <laughs> Very crossing, do they? No. Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? So reading the description, it says at roughly three and a half miles, the trail crosses Sai Creek. Soon afterwards, you'll begin the final climb up to Sai Pass. Over the course of the next one and a fourth miles, hikers will ascend almost 900 feet along a series of switchbacks. This will be the toughest section of the entire hike. At almost four and a half miles, hikers will reach Sai Pass. So here we get our first look at what's to come, or what we think is gonna be the height of it. This is not the top. This, this hiker is not at the top yet. Let's distract ourselves with this little chipmunk for a bit, shall we? <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. I sat down quite a few times and told Janet to go on on her own. <laughs> she waited. She waited for me. I picked myself up and got going again. Hopping out at 8,100 feet, this is one of the highest maintained trails in the park. Both Mount Sai and Sai Pass were named by George Bird Grinnell for a Blackfoot Indian by the name of Sai, which in the Blackfeet language means crazy dog or mad wolf. All right, here we are at the worst section for me. <laughs> too big a drop off there, too narrow a trail, but I made it. <laughs> I clung to that cliff and I made it.
nice. Creepy. That is nice, isn't it? It's like looking at a picture of Mars. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> or maybe Jupiter. <laughs> So yes, it was a lot steeper than Pegan Pass. <laughs> I got some new blisters on the bottoms of my toes, which really kind of surprised me. And I adopted, uh, I took Janet's trick with, uh, she puts her, the ear wrap around and then she puts her cap on top of it. Or no, she puts the cap, cap on, puts the ear wrap over the cap to keep your cap down. It was so windy, that was absolutely necessary. And it was really, really cold in that wind. At one point, I hadn't put my gloves on. Just as we were still going up to um, Pegan Pass, I hadn't put my gloves on yet. And uh, by the time I did, my fingers were so numb, I couldn't button up my flannel shirt. Yeah, it was pretty cold. We hiked 14 miles that day, had an elevation gain of uh, over 3,200 feet. We spent uh, over seven hours hiking. We reached, we got back to the car at six o'clock at night and Janet didn't get home to about 7.30 and I didn't get home till after eight. But it was a really, it was a really good hike and I'm glad we went up. And I did take something up with me. Yeah, I had taken, I had taken this up with me. I did not, I did not get it out. <laughs> sometimes you feel like it and sometimes you don't when you're on those hikes you know um, I just didn't but I did cart this up now the yarn is tied in knots by the yarn in us cappy at the yarn in us isn't that pretty yeah I really like that and the pattern I'm trying to knit is called outline by um, hmm I haven't tried to pronounce her name before. Uh, Beida Jezik or Beida Jezik. I don't know which one it is. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so it's a, it, uh, it knits in a zigzag pattern when you finally get around to it or to that part. I have not gotten that far. I haven't gotten very far at all. Let me see it. This is how far I've gotten. That's it. It's not very far. I admit it. Um, but you know, that's what's happening. And I am, for my um, little zigzags in between, I plan on using these minis I got from um, the Rising Tide Fiber Company that I won from um, Aquila. So there's five of those. I think those are going to be really pretty. And I think they're going to look uh, really nice with this yarn. Now I'm doing like every... All the other podcasters do trying to hold up way too much stuff at once but I think it's gonna be those are gonna be nice colors together so you know that's at least started but that's as far as I've gotten with that I guess what <laughs> another hike here we go <laughs> September 29th Janet and I decide to hike to Huckleberry Lookout even the view from where you park is pretty you're really going nowhere else if you're on this trail. It just goes to Huckleberry Lookout. It's a six mile trail in and six miles back. And it's really pretty. Janet had done this hike once before, but on horseback, this was my first time up here.
can finally see our destination. It's still about a mile away. These mountains are part of the Livingston Range in Montana. You can see clear into Canada from here. It's beautiful. with me. This is um, yarn from Mint Rain. Her name is, um, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it here in a minute. Her name is Caitlin. Caitlin from Mint Rain and I am using her Trekkie colorway. She is having a um, fall knit along right now. It started uh, September 22nd and it goes to um, December 20th. So you might want to go check her out and get in on that. I am knitting these <clears throat> socks for it. The pattern is the Blaze, Blaze pattern. I think it might be Blaze uh, by Jan Swarbrick. Hi, Jan. And so I thought I would um, bring these up here and show them off. The scenery is gorgeous up here. Uh, yeah, it couldn't be any prettier. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that yarn. It's two o'clock. It's time to head home. It took us just over two hours to get back to the car. We are about to switch from one mountainous view to another. Our path is right over there. We'll be going through that little, what they call a saddle right there. And we will be leaving all these beautiful mountains behind and we'll get a different view again of the beautiful mountains on the other side. That is what is happening. All right, we are at that little saddle area. Doesn't make such a great picture. Go 
go up and then we go down. Almost finished with this hike. Probably within a mile, I bet. We went up about 2,700 feet during it. Um, that's a decent climb, but it wasn't too bad. And we saw just seven people on this hike, which isn't a lot. So that was pretty nice, and it's been very, very pretty. We got rain coming down outside right now. Our snow uh, all melted away and um, it's, we're, it's supposed to turn into snow today and tomorrow, so we'll see. But right now it's just pouring rain out there. I can hear it. So, update on the socks I showed up there. Those were the Blaze. The pattern is the Blaze socks by Jan Swarbrick. Hi, Jan. Um, the yarn is by uh, Mint Rain from uh, Caitlin at Mint Rain. She has, uh, uh, she does yarn dyeing and she also has a podcast, Mint Rain podcast. And that is how far I've gotten so far. I'm just using a little uh, leftover yarn, some gray yarn I had for the toes, cuffs and heel. And I think these are gonna be really nice. I think um, that yarn is great. It's called Trekkie. I bought this from her quite a while ago and thought I would use it for her fall knit along, which uh, ends December 20th. I am not going to make it and have those socks finished by um, December 20th. I wish I was. I did want to say, um, as far as the Trekkie yarn goes, I looked up something and it says, um, Roddenberry, along with the show's producer, decided to take numerous cues from the United States Navy when creating the official ranks on the show. This is talking about the colors they used for the Star Trek uniforms. Including a captain overseeing a crew made up of a commander, a handful of lieutenant commanders, lieutenants, numerous subordinate roles, but it's the different colors of the Starfleet uniforms that really tell the story of how the Enterprise operates. Fans know the basics. An array of blue, red, and gold shirts line the bridge of the ship at every episode. <laughs> Those colors weren't just randomly picked for the sake of diversity, though. They actually correspond to the ship's various service roles. The gold shirts are worn by the command division, which includes Kirk, uh, Sulu, and Chekhov. Red uniforms belong to the Engineering Communications Division, including uh, Scotty and Uhura. The blue shirts are worn by the science medical staff, including McCoy and Spock. As with everything in Star Trek, though, it's a lot more complicated than all of that. In addition to the red shirts belonging to engineers and communications personnel, they are also assigned to the Security Division. What's the purpose of the Security Division on the Enterprise? Well, they're usually the mindless supporting characters 
who are immediately killed whenever the crew is confronted by a new enemy. This is something of a running gag for Trek fans, as whenever one of the red shirts is seen on screen, you know they're not long for this world. <laughs> and uh, Janet gave me a really interesting article about uh, forest fire lookouts in Montana that came out of the, daily, the newspaper, The Daily Interlake. Since 2013, the Northwest Montana chapter of the Forest Fire Lookout Association has partnered with area agencies to help restore and protect fire lookouts in Glacier National Park, Flathead, and Kootenai National Forests and other areas. Many of the structures are not being maintained because of budgetary restraints. So this group provides the manpower and sometimes a portion of the funding and has completed more than four dozen assessment and restoration projects in the past seven years. Montana once had 639 fire lookout structures, but is now down to just 130. Only 40 are staffed during fire season. With a short window of time to do the work during the summer, materials often have to be transported by pack animal or by helicopter. Fire lookouts are an important piece of Montana's history and are still very useful in fighting fires and as communications relays today, Chuck Manning said. Manning is the chairman of the Forest Fire Lookout Association in Montana. It is important that we take care of them so they can continue to be utilized by future generations. And sometimes you can, uh, there, often you can rent a forest fire lookout to spend, spend some nights in. Um, and I think that would really be a fun thing to do. Okay, so um, guess what? Another, <laughs> another hike. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hi. It is uh, October 30th, Friday. It's like uh, 26 degrees out. And I am on my way to meet Janet. We're going on a hike today. Um, we are going to go up, try to go up to Strawberry Lake. We have attempted Strawberry Lake twice this year. Um, I have pulled over on the side of the road so I could talk to you guys. Um, we tried it the first time on April 22nd and we couldn't make it because of um, fallen trees. We couldn't get up there because there were so many fallen trees across the road. We couldn't even get to the trailhead. And then we tried it again on May 25th and we couldn't make it then either because there was too much snow. We got to the top of the hill and there was a big snow drift across the trail. It was a really steep part of the trail and um, Janet and I didn't feel like risking our lives to make it to Strawberry Lake. So we'll see what happens today. Maybe we'll make it, maybe we won't. I have been feeling a little down lately for various reasons and I think I really need this hike. I've been reading this book, Mary Fields, Deliverance, Mary Fields. It's a story about um, the first African-American woman star route a mail carrier in the United States. She spent a lot of her time in Montana and it's been an interesting read, but she, um, she has a quote in there and I'll read it if we make it up to, uh, to Strawberry Lake. <laughs> I thought it might, uh, I really liked her quote and I thought, yeah, that, that might, that might help me, um, you know, get out of my little, uh, blues. You know, it's not terrible, but it's not great. It, I would like things to be better. So <laughs> let's go see what happens and I'll show you some of the, uh, the drive in today.
<laughs> That's pretty. We came up and saw the snow and walked back, but obviously my memory is yeah. faulty. Whatever. Pretty. <laughs> Pretty. Pretty. She's enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if I should bring my snowshoes. Ah, uh, apparently not. Seems like maybe not, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to strawberry? Yeah, that was uh, Strawberry Lake. Six miles uh, round trip and 1,900 foot climb in elevation. Evidently, third time's a charm. <laughs> it was so cold up there. <laughs> so cold. We wore, uh, Janet brought those orange hats for us to wear because it is hunting season here in Montana and she wanted to make sure we did not get mistaken for a deer or something. Our plan was to hike to Strawberry Lake and then beyond it to uh, Wildcat Lake, which would have been a total of uh, just over 10 miles, but we didn't make it. And, you know, sometimes we don't, sometimes we don't complete our hikes. And I, I don't usually, I don't show those. Um, as you, as you saw, this was the uh, third trip up to Strawberry Lake we had uh, attempted and finally we made it on the third time. So I guess the third time is a charm. But Janet and I have taken quite a few hikes over the summer that in my mind we never completed because we didn't reach our destination. Either we didn't reach the lake or we didn't reach, um, you know, the, uh, the top of the mountain we were climbing for. So I don't usually show those. Uh, sometime maybe I'll do a um, <laughs> hikes we didn't finish up podcast, but not right now. I did take up something. I did haul something up to Strawberry Lake with me, and I did not get it out and, and uh, show that up there either, because uh, frankly, it was too cold, and I just didn't. I wasn't feeling up to it. So this is what I took up with me. This is called the Children's Mermaid Tale. Oh, that looks nice on camera. This is by Marta Silter Design. It's a free pattern. Does that look like mermaid scales? It looks like fish scales, right? Oh, that's pretty cool looking. I'm knitting this for Russell. So this is the, this will be at his waist, and then you knit this, and then eventually put a tail on the end of it. I'm gonna do like a light blue tail. I have some, I'm just using some, uh, uh, you know, some rayon yarn. I have, um, this one is, it's just some old stuff I had. Orlon, Sayel. I'm just doing something really. So he can just, they, his mom can wash it. Russell wants a mermaid tail. He's in love with mermaids. He likes that Barbie show on TV about mermaids. Um, the magical, I don't know, whatever. We've watched it a few times. So he asked me to make him a mermaid tail. So I got this started. I still have about, I measured him, I tried this on him. I still have about eight inches to go from here before I can start the tail. I wanna make sure it's plenty long enough. This will, basically this is just gonna be like a little blanket thing. Um, he's pretty excited about it. I'm wanting to get it done for him because I think it'll be really cute. And speaking of incomplete hikes, what did you guys do on election day? <laughs> Janet and I had already voted and since the weather worked out and we were ready for a new hike we went for a hike on election day which was perfect because 
Who didn't need a uh, distraction from that, right? I know we did. Election day hike. Just what we need. Our goal was to get up to Marion Lake. We didn't make it. Um, there was a tree across the road, so we couldn't even drive quite to the trailhead. Uh, there was a lot of snow and ice on the road to the trailhead. And then, um, and then the snow backed off for about half the hike, and then we had to throw on our snowshoes, which we had carted up on our backpacks with us. Yeah, it was a um, much more difficult hike than it normally would have been. I did that hike to Marion Lake by myself on October 12th of last year in episode 39, and I made it all the way to the lake, and so I was excited to get to the lake again this last time. It just wasn't to be. Um, there was a, an elk or, or a moose or something ahead of us uh, most of the way through the snow, and it was, um, its prints were going very, its legs were going very deep into that snow. And so as we were uh, hiking up with our snowshoes on, every time we would reach one of its tracks, our snowshoes would, would tip over sideways. It made it really uncomfortable and awkward. And there was no way to get out of the trail and the trail was really narrow. So it was hard to get those big snowshoes working well there. We were really close to the lake and we were frustrated we couldn't make it. But, but, you know, Janet and I are really good at knowing when to turn around. I think we are. And when to not be so stubborn that we get ourselves into trouble. We were both tired. It was after one o'clock. Uh, we stopped for lunch at one, which seemed late um, for lunch. And we were really hungry. We wanted to wait till the lake, but we didn't. And then we went on a little bit after that because, you know, now we're feeling fortified. It just didn't work out.
is what I'm trying to say. But that lake will still be there. <laughs> we'll do that again. Janet hasn't been to Marion Lake, and I've just been there the one time. Um, so, finally, I'm going to give you guys, read that quote from Mary Fields from that book. Mary Fields, this is what she said. Panoramas deliver joy to the heart, quote, unquote. It was her experience that elevated overviews were gateways to infinity that gifted calm and the clarity to make important decisions. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's a lot of the reason I like to go hiking so much. I like the, uh, the workout, but I could, you know, I could work out here at home. That would be easier and less effort, but getting out into the nature just clears my mind and reminds me of what's important and and what's not important. <laughs> and I think we really needed that on uh, election day. I wanted to do some podcasting that day. I had um, taken up my um, tripod. I had carted up my tripod along with my snowshoes and I still didn't do any podcasting. Um, which is which is crazy, but uh, sometimes that's how it goes. I would like to show uh, these are the herb splatter herb splatter socks. I sent them to my friend Carol. I made them for her for her birthday, so they're gone. But I do have pictures and video. These are the herb splatter socks from Christine of Sweet Lavender Knits podcast, which you should go check out. She's in Toronto in Canada. The uh, main yarn is uh, Tennessee Whiskey by Big Sky Yarn Company and Earthbound from the Cat Lady Yarn. And also, Christine is, has offered a pattern to give away on my podcast. So if you would like to um, win the pattern for these, just uh, include the words falling leaves in your comment because that is what herb splatter means. It's um, falling leaves in German. For Christine, uh, she asked me to test knit those socks for her and I did. And unlike what I have done for Jan Swarbrick, which I apologize, Jan, from now on I will test knit your socks the way the pattern is written and not um, alter it for toe up, which is my preference. I knit those cuff down as Christine's pattern is written. I just want to say that falling leaves pattern is much easier than it looks. Much, it's, it's not a, it's not a problem at all. I did have a little trouble um, since I usually knit toe up. I know where to stop for my, for my uh, fish lips kiss heel. But on uh, Cuff Down, I found it more of a challenge to figure that out. <laughs> but I did read something. Uh, Janet loaned me this book called Folk Socks, The History and Techniques of Hand-Knitted Footwear by Nancy Bush. And she said, I found this interesting, no article of human apparel has been more taken for granted than the sock. And yet throughout history, language and customs show that they have been an important part of everyday life. To be in one's socks is an indication of stature. To knock the socks off means to beat thoroughly. To pull one's socks up is to make an effort and to put a sock in it is a slightly more polite way than some of the alternatives to ask someone to stop speaking. Old socks is a familiar way to address someone and socking away money is something that has been going on since money was invented. I thought that was pretty cool. But on page 52, she discusses sock measurements, and this is what she says. The Danish book Bondstrik contains some wonderful rules for measuring the foot of a sock or stocking. According to this source, the length of the knitted foot is correct if the heel and toe meet when wrapped around the wearer's fist. After conducting some research, I found that this rule proves true almost every time. Another rule advises the knitter to begin toe decreases when the foot of the stocking in progress is laid around the flat palm of the wearer's hand 
and the needles meet over the heel. This rule is a handy one. It saves you from chasing down a measuring tape as you frantically work to arrive at the toe, but it also uh, requires you to have the person there, doesn't it? <laughs> so I thought, I thought that was all pretty interesting. And I, uh, I did have to uh, pull out the uh, toe of that sock after I had knitted and uh, make the uh, foot longer. <laughs> But it's done, and my friend uh, Carol has them. Hi, Carol, and I, I think she really likes them. I thought they were really, really pretty. Oh, so, yeah, it's been um, six weeks since I last uh, uploaded a, an episode of my podcast. There's various reasons, and one of them is uh, I've developed tennis elbow, and so I, I haven't been able to knit. Um, I don't even, I, I hardly know where to begin about that. I don't want to whine about it too much because I know a lot of other people have experienced it, but it's been like a month since I've been able to do uh, any kind of knitting. And uh, frankly, that's kind of like going through withdrawals for me. I've had to find other things to fill my day with and it hasn't been easy. Luckily, my friend Janet, who, who I take all these hikes with, has also experienced tennis elbow and she's been very supportive. Also, uh, people in my Ravelry group, um, Ray, Tahira, Catherine, Jan, and Linda have all been really supportive, and I want to thank you guys. Uh, they've had suggestions. I may have to uh, check out some different knitting techniques, try something other than the uh, English throw I do. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to get over it so badly. <laughs> oh gosh, I did take up on that last hike, I did take up some yarn, although I didn't show that either. You know, if you're not knitting, you can still order yarn. Yeah, they let you do that. Isn't that crazy? They do. Holy cow. Yeah, so I ordered this one. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. This is from Cappy at the Yarn and Us. And actually, her grandson, Milo, dyed this. He wrote his name on it right there. <laughs> he's about, I think she said he's five years old. Isn't that, that's pretty. I couldn't resist that beautiful pink. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I have a few patterns. Um, choices picked out of maybes so we'll see thank you Kathy that's really pretty and thank you Milo really really appreciate that the other one I ordered was this um, Andrea put this up on uh, Instagram and I was like oh well yeah that's gonna happen look at that this is from Andrea at the Cat Lady Yarn Designs. She also has a podcast, but she's selling yarn now that she hand dyes, and this is called Plum Tuckered. It's on perfect, what she calls perfect sock, 80% merino, 20% nylon. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, I love those colors. Yeah, thinking that, that might be good for Christmas, huh? Christmas socks. Oh, I think that's really, really pretty. I really like that too. So yeah, that's been a lot of the reason I have not uploaded a podcast episode. It's because I'm not knitting and it feels really weird. <sighs> frustrating, super frustrating. Uh, I do have one of those straps for my arm. I'm wearing it here. Um, I am taking some ibuprofen and I'm resting it. Rest, rest, rest is what everybody says. You got to rest it. So um, it's resting. <laughs> Not happily, but it's resting. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the election was Tuesday. Janet and I went for a hike. Uh, we could have gone for a hike on Wednesday too because counting continued. And... Um, Counting continued on Thursday. So what did we do? Carmen and I and Janet went for another hike. We went to Avalanche Lake. 
We have done this uh, hike on June 18th in episode 47, we did this hike. And uh, here we are starting it out. Uh, are those signs clear enough for you? Not for some people, huh? <laughs> Oh, it was so windy that day. There were lots of down trees. Uh, some, some of them fell across the uh, trail. you forgot her bear spray. Yeah. I better catch up to the other two that actually have bear spray, haven't I? <laughs> And those waterfalls were just being blown right off the mountain, just spraying right off the mountain. about 35 people on that trail which is a lot less than usual we would usually see like 35 people within 15 minutes on that trail I think um, because it's a really pretty and relatively easy hike in Glacier National Park for lunch? I brought those nuts. Um, one piece of mango. And uh, that might be it. I can't remember. Not much else.
sounds a lot less fierce today for some reason than it did last time we were here. We ate lunch at uh, Apgar uh, on uh, one end of the shore of Lake McDonald, and it was really, really pretty. Yeah. Well, here's something I wish I was working on. I have the second sleeve started on my very altered mermaid top by Rebecca McKenzie. Yeah, this is hardly her top anymore other than this really pretty pattern right there. That's definitely hers. I, I just really altered this a lot. Put in this neck, this longer neck and um, made it long sleeves. So first sleeves finished and um, so close on the second sleeve. Wish I could knit on it, but um, that's not happening right now. And uh, one other thing I can't um, work on right now is the hat I was making for um, the knit along I'm doing. Yeah, I decided to do a knit along uh, for my on my podcast, and it's called the. Um, have yarn will travel 2020. <sighs> Can you hear that frustration? Yeah. I'm knitting this with, um, let's see, this, this is Katie's Cap by Wilma Malcolmson. Um, and I'm knitting this with Dark Forest from the Cat Lady yarn. I think that's really pretty. I'm using Tennessee Whiskey by Big Sky Yarn Co. Rocking around the Christmas tree. I'm using various colors in this because it needs it, but I haven't gotten very far with it. So the whole idea of, of my knit along was um, to knit something um, that represented a place that you would have liked to have gone uh, during COVID that you couldn't go. I am not gonna go on about um, you know, this is a traditional Fair Isle hat, um, the traditional style from Fair Isle in the Shetland, Shetland Islands, and I'm not going to go about the sh go on about the Shetland Islands and explain uh, how cool they are because I'm sure everybody probably knows, and if you don't, you can you can look it up. So, if you want to join in that knit along, it started uh, October 1st. I'm going to pick a winner on February 1st. And the winner will um, will get to pick out their own um, yarn shop, and then I'm going to send them a uh, a gift card to what uh, to a Montana a Montana yarn shop. I'd like to push some Montana yarn, so that's what's going to happen with that. So if you want to uh, join that, it, it's on Ravelry in my Ravelry group, Victoria Knits. If you aren't on Ravelry and can't use Ravelry right now, just give me a heads up. You can contact me on Ravelry as um, Victoria Jean. On Instagram, I'm Victoria Jean W. You can always email me at vjwilliams54 at gmail.com. Um, and uh, just FYI, all the um, podcast notes will be below the podcast. Hit that little arrow to the right and it'll, it's a little drop down and I'll have podcast notes there. I'll also have the podcast in my Ravelry group with the notes in that also. So I think we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon. Um, the October Guernsey calendar, my friend Jan Swarbrick sent me a uh, Guernsey calendar uh, last year for Christmas and the October one is for Herm Harbor. I'll insert a picture. It's an island of crystal clear water and golden sands, wild cliff paths and tender gardens, cozy inns and fine dining, pretty cottages and country style luxury hotel. Herm is an island of great natural beauty and tranquility, which offers a retreat from the modern world and a return to life's purest pleasures. People come from near and far to let the stresses and drains of life melt away. <laughs> I laugh because who doesn't need that right now, right? 
<laughs> what with the election and COVID and whatnot. Holy heck, yeah, that sounds really, really nice. <laughs> And uh, since we're in November, I'll do the November one. It's Saints Bay. Saints Bay is a beautiful sandy cove with a pebble bank at the top of the beach, surrounded by sheltering cliffs. The views from here are spectacular. Yeah, that sounds really good, too. Yeah. Well, I would love to go to Guernsey. Okay. So what I've been watching on TV, The Office. And I finished watching that uh, quite a while ago. And you know what? It already sounds good to watch again. I love The Office. I just finished The Queen's Gambit. Um, thank you, Sandra, for that recommendation. I watched Away on Netflix. I would recommend that. Uh, my husband and I are looking forward to season two of The Mandalorian, which has already started. But um, Actually, I was really surprised at this, but Kim said he would prefer that we wait for a few episodes to build up. He's, he's not a binge watcher like I am, so that surprised me, but I'm happy to do that. And there's an off the porch segment as usual. Um, besides lots of tomatoes, Kim grew a lot of garlic this year. He'll use some of that to seed to replant garlic, and then we'll eat the rest of it. I've been babysitting the boys, and... Uh, the grandsons and I'll show playing some cards with Russell. I have to kind of hold his cards up when we play Go Fish because he can't quite control them in his little hands. He doesn't quite, and I don't want to see them. So uh, that's how we play it, but that works out really well. They went trick-or-treating. There was a lot of social distancing during that. They did, everybody did a pretty good job and I'll show a bit of wildlife. Um, other than that, we're doing pretty good here. Um, Hopefully this election is over and the, uh, the votes will get counted and we'll get it all settled and we'll all be able to move on. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Black Lives Still Matter. I'm sorry to hear that that's not trending as much as it used to because it's still really, really important. Um, and we can't leave it up to people of color to solve that issue. We still need to do our part. I'm involved in a um, book club that we're meeting. Um, and reading, reading some, uh, a book about that. So trying to raise our awareness and I'm really grateful for that. I can't, um, I don't think there's much else going on. Larky's doing okay. Um, and we're just still trying to hang in there. And uh, I don't know when I'm gonna put out another episode because I need to get some knitting done, don't I? So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I did buy a, a wine advent calendar from Costco, which looks like fun. I have two 12-day ad, uh, knit advents coming. So I'm not sure if I'll do Vlogmas or not. Yeah, it's kind of a toss-up at this point. Um, if I can get my arm working again and get some knitting going, I might. Anyway, gosh, um, I so appreciate everybody watching. I know this is going to be another long podcast, and I hope that's okay. So I just have to say goodbye from Northwest Montana. Thank you so much for watching. Um, leave a comment if you want to win that sock pattern because it's a good pattern. <laughs> Bye. See you next time, I hope. No. No? No. Do you have the fish with the drum? Let me see. Say please. Uh, say, say. Say, say please. Oh, I got a match. <laughs> oh, nice. Do you have the fish with the drum? Let me see. Say please. No. No? Go fish, huh? Go fish. Ah, oh, look what I got. Let me see. What the? You got it matching? I got a match. Your turn. You have the fish with the flower. The flower? No. Go no, no. Go fish. Hey, I got another match. Another man.
Oh, nice work. Your turn. Do you have the fish with uh, pineapple? No. Go fish. No! No matches. No matches? No. Do you have the fish with the book? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Your turn. You have the fish with a pineapple again. No, go fish. <laughs> mm. Oh, I have the. Oops! I didn't tell you. Okay, good. Do you have the fish with the ABCs? Yes. <sighs> Guess who just won? Who? No! Look at this, Russell. Russell, 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 stop. Good job. Wow, Nico, it's your turn. Wow, Nico, you go too. Come on. Yeah. Um, um, this one, I almost got caught in the spider one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. like a laser. Look what he has, Russell. Thank you. <laughs> 